Good evening to all of you, Mr. Radia and my dear friends. When I was about to start for this place, I found there were some showers, very good welcome rains. So I was very happy because rains are any day more important for Gujarat than any lecture. So I said it doesn't matter if the lecture is not there, but I would like to have more rains in Gujarat. But I'm glad the rains have stopped and uh, many of you have taken the trouble of coming for this uh, very important topic. Some of you would be wondering what is this bureaucrat doing here talking about yoga and uh, yoga way of life, etc. In fact, in uh, the introduction, uh, Mr. Radia probably forgot to mention yes, that at present, for the last one year, I'm doing my research on the subject of yoga and its impact on management. So the topic is, does yoga way of life have an impact on the managerial outcome? This is the specific topic on which I am doing my research for the last one year. One more year to go. I am actually on a sabbatical from the service. I still continue to be part of the IAS, Indian Administrative Service. But I am on a sabbatical for two years in order to pursue the research, which I am doing at Bangalore. There is a university for yoga in Bangalore, which is called Swami Vivekanand Yoga Anusandhan Sansthan. So that's the place where I am doing my research. And one of my guide is from Indian Institute of Management Bangalore and one of the guide is from the Yoga Institute. So it's a combination of management and yoga which I'm pursuing. Well, friends, with this small background, let me come to the topic for today, which is yoga way of life for self-management, right? Now, management is all that AMA is concerned about and many of you are also concerned about the management. Many of you I am sure with your interest in yoga would have come here for the lecture series of Swami Anubhavanandji recently. Very interesting lecture series. I was also very fortunate to listen to him because the topic is something on which I am doing my research. Management with a difference. That was the topic of Swami Anubhavanandji. And when he started his lecture, it was very interesting the way he started his first day lecture. He said, today you need management for everything. You need management in government, you need management of a company, management of an institution, life management, wife management. So this is how he started his topic. And it's quite true. In fact, the word management has become so ubiquitous that everybody is now thinking about managing the situations. So if we have to focus on the management of so many things, including life management, institution management, government management, the basis of any management, let us understand very clearly, is nothing else but self-management. You would all agree with me. Because unless an individual has got a stability of mind, unless the reflexes of a person are in place, unless he is focused, unless a person has got control on his emotions, and unless a person has got a balance in his life, there is no way, my dear friends, that he will make a good manager. He will become a disastrous manager unless he has got all these qualities. So the first point of today's discussion is that below any management lies the art of self-management. That is the first point you should take away from here. Self-management is at the base of any good management or it is, it is, it is, it is, it is the quality of any good manager. How do you do this self-development? This is the question that we are going to study today, right? Please feel free to ask questions in between if they are of clarificatory nature. Otherwise, please wait till the end, till I finish my one hour of presentation, then we will have 15 minutes of questions and answers, okay? So, we are talking about external management and we are talking about the internal management. When we say, I want to become a good manager, <coughs> We are talking about managing something outside us. 
managing people, managing institution or whatever. And when we talk about the internal management, I'm talking about managing my own self. How do, you, uh, how do I manage my own life in such a way that it has a positive impact on the way I lead, the way I manage my business or the way I manage my institution? This is a very important point. Do you think anybody can succeed without self-management? Certainly not. So that is the primary point you must remember. Everybody is required to manage himself first before he tries to manage anybody else or he tries to manage any other institution or a company. This is the first point that you should remember. What is self-management? This is a big question because not many people will agree on the definition of self-management. But I'm sure the way I have put it here, most of you will agree with that. So basically it's managing one's own body, thoughts, intellect, emotions and spirit. Right? Do you all agree with this? Managing one's body, thoughts, intellect, emotions and spirit. We have to manage these five factors with respect to ourselves, with respect to our life. And if we are successful in doing it, then we will definitely make an excellent outstanding manager anywhere. The second point about self-management is, which is an expansion of the first point, when I am saying five points, one of them is emotions. Now managing emotions is a very difficult task for most human beings because our mind is not in our control. Isn't it? So as part of the first point, one of the point is emotions. And in emotions, we have got lots of negative emotions such as anger, jealousy, greed, ego, over attachment to things. These are the emotions which we cannot escape. It has gripped us so much in life that it's very difficult to get rid of them. So if we have to manage ourselves, one of the important objective of self-management is to get complete control on our emotions. Because an emotional manager will not ever make a stable manager. He will not be able to deal with people in a, in a very proper way. He will not be able to have one-to-one -one relationship with people. Absolutely instinctive kind of a management, instinct, instinctive behavior does not help any management. You have to have a proper control over your emotions, be it anger or jealousy or whatever. So these are the emotions we need to be controlled. And the third point is that for any successful manager, what is required is a focus, focus on the objective. Because after all, management is an art of taking the help of so many people, organizing activity for the purpose of achieving a predetermined goal, that is management. So one is required to have that kind of a focus in life, equipoise, concentration, very important. Tolerance, risk-taking capacity, a meek kind of a manager who is not able to decide what should I do is no good, my dear friends. So he needs courage of conviction about what he thinks and that kind of courage of conviction, ability to think long term, focus, these are the attributes of a good manager which are required in a good manager. How do you get this kind of attributes? Through yoga, there is no better way, please understand, we have got this ancient wisdom of yoga given to us by our rishis. And it's such a systematic art of developing all these qualities which you need for a manager. It's a very systematic art of uh, getting all this. So this is what is the point. So the best path for self-management according to me now that I have studied yoga, and I'm sure you would accept my wisdom in this now, now that already I have spent one year studying the science of yoga. In fact, the science of yoga is spread over so many scriptures in, in India. The wisdom lies in Bhagavad Gita, the wisdom lies in so many Upanishads, the wisdom lies in Patanjali's Yoga Sutra, it lies in Hatha Yoga Pradiptika, it lies everywhere. But I have tried to sort of cull out the major points out of that. And 
put them in order in form of what I call yoga way of life. What do I mean by yoga way of life? I will tell you what is yoga way of life. So all that ancient wisdom could be put in a summary form as, as kind of a wisdom before you and that is called yoga way of life. We will uh, talk about it, right? But please understand and please remove the misconception in your mind that yoga is only asana and pranayam. This is a popular misconception among people. Even today, 11 million people practice yoga asanas every day in America, USA. 5 million people practice yoga in Germany. But what is it that they are doing? They are only practicing asanas. Nothing more than that. But is yoga only asana and pranayama? Certainly not. Yoga is actually a philosophy of life. It is the way you live your life. And that is why you need to understand the complete meaning of yoga and the yoga way of life in order to get the maximum benefit of yoga. Yes, doing asana and pranayama does give us a lot of advantages. It is, these are superb techniques, only doing asana and pranayama. But if you really want holistic benefit of the entire concept of yoga, then you need to learn about it. You need to understand what is yoga way of life. And then the benefit is complete. Okay? Having said that, I must say that it's a path of all-round personality development for developing physical, mental, social and spiritual abilities in a person. So it's an all-round development of a personality. Right? Many of us are so lopsided. Some people are only concentrating on physical development. Some people are very good in mental, but they are neglecting their physic. Some people are very good in both physical and mental, but they have forgotten to visit their old auntie who has been almost in the deathbed for last so many years and she is waiting. When will my nephew come and meet me? Because she is the one who has brought you up, but you have no time to go and visit her. So there is an imbalance, social. And then there is a spiritual growth also which is required in life. Because that is the growth, spiritual growth, which truly gives you happiness in life. Nothing else. All other things give you kick, kind of an ego satisfaction. But the real happiness of life, bliss of life, it only comes out of spirituality. So you need to have a balance, physical, mental, social and spiritual. And that's where yoga is going to help you. Let's straight away come to the topic of yoga. The basic wisdom lies in Taitriya Upanishad, one of the ten major Upanishads on which Sankaracharya has written the commentary, the Upanishad as they are called. One of them is Taitriya Upanishad. The Taitriya Upanishad wisdom says that a human existence is not only limited to body. A human existence is not limited to body, unlike what the modern science thinks. The modern medical science recognizes only the physical body of a person. If there is a problem in the body, fix it up. Give injection, give medicine, do surgery. But the science of yoga says you are not only your body, but you have got five layers around you in and around you, five layers, Panch Kosha as they are called, the theory of Panch Kosha. It's given in Taitri Upanishad. The first Kosha is Annamai Kosha, the gross physical body that we have, which is the same thing as medical science also recognizes. So the blood and the flesh and the bones and the uh, veins, whatever we have in the physical body is Annamai Kosha, gross physical body. That is where the comparison ends between modern science and the yoga science. Then the yoga science says that more important than the physical body are the other four layers of existence. The next layer of your existence is Pranamai Kosha. It's a layer of prana in and around your body. What is prana? Prana is not breath. 
breathing is only an outward manifestation of prana but prana is a subtle form of energy which is flowing in your body in 72 lakh nadis of your body that is prana it's a subtle energy and you must have heard about the techniques of tai tai chi and all those and all these techniques are based on the pranic science of indian ancient wisdom please remember they may be labeling it anyway but the pranic energy flow of pranic energy in the body that is what makes an individual prana it's not only the gross physical body so that is pranamai kosha it is there inside your body outside your body also the prana okay then the third layer is manomai kosha manomai kosha is the layer of mind right the central layer out of the five layers manomai kosha is very important because it is the mind which controls all our motivations in life it is the mind which controls the emotions so unlike a modern physical science the mind in yogic literature consists of four things mana buddhi chit ahankar these are the four components of mind and these four components have to be tackled when we talk about manomai kosha then we have to tackle all this four mana buddhi chitta ahankar i'm not going to give you the distinction between all this four now because i'll be taking a lot of time on those things but whenever we talk in detail about it i can explain to you what is the distinction between mana and buddhi buddhi and chitta chitta and ahankar ahankar of course you can understand very easily but there is a distinction between all these four things so manomai kosha is central to our existence then the fourth layer which is the vigyanamai kosha now this is this requires some explanation manomai kosha is easy to understand but what is vigyanamai kosha it is basically our ability to distinguish between what is right for me and what is not right for me it is an it is a it is a kind of a wisdom sea of wisdom which we have built up in our self now that wisdom may be misplaced or the wisdom may be correct also these are the notions of life that we have wisdom are the notions of life that we have some people think that in this world only if you have money you can be happy this is a notion that one has developed only with money you can be happy without money there is nothing in this life these are the notions people have got where does this notion come from vigyanamai kosha right so this is an intellectual ability of a person to understand what is good for me what is not good for me now that understanding may not be correct but he has got that understanding and it will remain there unless it is cured through yoga way of life okay so vigyanamai kosha is also important and then finally the fifth kosha is the anandamai kosha it's a layer of bliss all around us happiness the true happiness which lies in anandamai kosha and every individual has got anandamai kosha in some form or the other some people have got a larger anandamai kosha which is expressed in their attitude in their behavior and you do feel like meeting such people more often because they have got a larger anandamai kosha there are some people whose anandamai kosha is so shankan that you would like to avoid such people you don't want to naturally you know there is a natural abhorrence towards such people you don't want to go near these people they are so sad and so uh, this thing that you don't want to go near these people right so anandamai kosha it's a layer of bliss around us and ultimate purpose of life is to really identify ourselves not as annamai kosha not as the body but to progress from annamai to pranamai pranamai to manomai manomai to vigyanamai vigyanamai to anandamai we ultimately want to get bliss and so right now 
90% of us think that we are our body only. Who am I? I am Asmu Khadiya, 5 foot 6 inch, dark complexion, having certain limitations of body, having certain limitations of mind. This is what is my picture of myself. We never think of ourselves as a form of pure consciousness. And that's where the trouble lies. Because the moment you identify yourself with a body which has got limitations, then you lose your self-esteem. The moment you do that, you lose your self-esteem. And the moment you identify yourself as a part of a larger setup of consciousness which is prevailing in the world, then you feel so much more confident and ha happy then you have got nothing to worry about. So this is the basic science of Taitriya Upanishad. Now, how does yoga help us? Through yoga, we have to try and correct the imbalance in each one of this. Okay? Do you know why do we fall sick? Because these Panch Koshas are all interconnected. And that's why we fall sick. The first originating point of a disease is in the mind. The moment mind has certain desires which cannot be achieved in life, there will be frustration. The frustration will be depicted through an irregular pranamai kosha. So it will have an impact on the next uh, layer. Pranamai kosha will be impacted. You do notice, no? when you get angry, what happens to your breath? You start painting fast, isn't it? Okay. Are you all sleeping or am I making a sense or are you all light? Okay. If you at all feel sleepy, we can always get up and do a little bit of meditation. Do you want to do that? Small meditation? You want to do that? Okay. What you do is just put your pen down, all the material, relax your body, relax your body completely. Don't be tense anywhere, okay? Just relax. And what we will do is that we will spend about two minutes with eyes closed watching our breath. Hmm? I'm sure Ramdev ji is so popular. Actually, he's the next uh, most popular person next to Amitabh Bachchan. So, Ramdev ji has created quite a revolution in uh, Ahmedabad. Many of you must be doing Nadi Suddhi or Anulom Vilom, what he calls. We call it Nadi Suddhi in uh, Bangalore but he calls it Anulom Vilom. So you are quite familiar with what is Anulom Vilom and all this, right? If you can't do Anulom Vilom, it's fine. But what you do is ki you watch your breath, close your eyes, try to stop your thoughts and try to watch your breath going in, going out. Your mind should travel along with your breath. If your breath is going out, your mind will go out along with that. When your breath is going in, just travel along with that, okay? Try to do this for two minutes, okay? And then we will again do this. Thank you.
Thank you very much. So, there is a cure in yoga for setting right all these five koshas. If there is an imbalance in each one of the kosha, you have to set right the imbalance in each one of the kosha. So, for example, pranamai kosha, the technique of pranayam, it helps us in setting right the balance of pranamai kosha, the pranayam. Then, manomai kosha. Manomai kosha, the best technique for manomai kosha is dharna, dhyan, samadhi. These are the three layers in the Ashtanga Yoga. So, if you are able to go into meditation, then your mind is better under better control, right? But this one we will talk about in the next uh, slide. Vigyanamai kosha, of course, uh, manomai kosha, the emotion part of manomai kosha can be handled only by bhakti yoga, the feeling of surrender. Then Vigyanamai kosha. Vigyanamai kosha is the notional understanding of life. And that is where you need a major correction. You, many of us think that life is all about enjoyment or life is all about wealth, life is all about getting a position, life is all about creating things, but certainly not so. There is much more to life than what we think. So if you are able to correct our understanding of life by going to such lecture sessions, then it does help us remove our stress level and it does help us have a better life. So that is what is the Vigyan Mai Kosha correction which only comes through wisdom, knowledge of scriptures, listening to good lectures. In short, what we call satsang, doing satsang, sitting with wise people, trying to learn these things, that is called satsang, right? And Anand Mai Kosha, again meditation will help us in going into higher levels of bliss, right? Now talking of yoga, let us cover one or two definitions of what yoga is. Basically, as you know, mind is a con conglomeration of thoughts, in session flow of thoughts, unrelated thoughts, unrelated to each other, but still constantly in our mind, there is a process of thinking going on, 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 on. Even now, 50% of you are not here, I'm sure. You are, your mind is somewhere else. It happens, you have no control on your mind. And the objective of yoga is exactly this, to gain mastery over your mind. Patanjali's Yoga Sutra, which is a very beautiful science of 196 sutras only. 196 sutras, they are like formulas, mathematical formulas, given in a very precise manner. Not a single word is wasted. When you look at these scriptures, you are amazed how something some people say it is 10,000 year old, but the most common understanding of Patanjali Yoga Sutra is 4,000 year old. How a person 4,000 years ago has created this Patanjali Yoga Sutra in form of small, small sutras, which are like formulas. In the second sutra of Patanjali's Yoga Sutra, the definition of yoga given is Chit Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodaha. Yoga is to gain mastery over thoughts. Yoga ha chitta vritti nirodaha. This is the definition of Patanjali. Mastery over the thoughts. That is what is the complete objective of yoga. People don't even know this. People think that yoga is for improving your physique. Certainly not, my dear friend. Even the asanas which you do in yoga, these asanas also are meant to stabilize your mind, not the body. That is how the asanas are made. No asana is done in a hurry. The asanas are done slowly, steadily, and whenever you reach the final posture, you are supposed to maintain that posture for long. And you can imagine, if you are in sirsasan for 10 minutes, your mind will not be able to wander anywhere. Because you have to keep the balance of your body. Your mind is being controlled. So your mind is kept occupied for 10 continuous minutes. It's an exercise of controlling your mind, not the body. Because Patanjali says yoga is a technique of getting mastery over the mind, not the body. So this is what is very important. The definition itself says it is a control of mind, not body. 
no doubt when there is an improvement in your mind there is definite stress reduction because of which your body will improve 100 percent and some kind of flexibility will come to your body along with asanas also but that's not the main benefit of yoga if somebody has been able to improve his physical body with the help of yoga asanas that is only an indirect benefit direct benefit is control of mind okay the second definition is given in yoga vasishta vasishta was the guru of lord rama as you know he said yoga ha prasamana upaya ha prasaman upaya ha man ka saman karna prasaman karna shaman karna man ka that is yoga again second definition pointing to the fact that yoga is a technique of control of mind not of body yoga ha prasamana upaya ha Having said this, let us understand what do I mean by yoga way of life. Okay? Three things according to me. First is following the Ashtang Yoga. Patanjali has given eightfold path of yoga, which is called Ashtang Yoga. Out of this eightfold path, many of us are doing only two things: asana, pranayam. But Patanjali has given eightfold path. And the best advantage of yoga will come only if we try to follow the eightfold path of patanjali rather than only asana and pranayama that is number one number two is the wisdom we have got in bhagavad gita called the philosophy of karma yoga if you learn the karma yoga attitude to life which is given in bhagavad gita what does it mean and if you try to imbibe that into your life there will be definite improvement in the quality of your life. I can assure you that. Karma Yoga attitude to life. What is it we will talk about? And finally, of course, apart from this too, if you want to add to Yoga way of life, the third thing which you must add to Yoga way of life is following 20 principles of universal values, 20 universal values which are given by Lord Krishna in chapter 13 of Bhagavad Gita from slok number 7 to 13 in this 6 or 7 slokas 20 human values are given by Lord Krishna which anybody should try to follow in their life now this human values are no different from what other religions have also prescribed basically these are all the same thing but I can tell you that if you only do these three things you need not read any other Upanishad any other scripture don't even need to read the whole of Bhagavad Gita because in this 20 values and in the karma yoga attitude to life the wisdom of all the 18 chapters of Bhagavad Gita are included so there is nothing else that you need to do other than this very simplistic formula very simplistic but when you look at the list of 20 basic principles you will find out not so easy to do we understand it is good for us but we try avoiding it so we need to do that, okay? Patanjali's Ashtang Yoga, eightfold path of yoga. What are this eightfold path? What is this eightfold path? Yama, Niyama, Pratihara, Ashan, Pratyahar, Dharna, Dhyana and Samadhi. These are the eightfold path of Patanjali, right? The last three is actually the ultimate aim of yoga. Going into Samadhi, first into dharana these three are different steps of the same process you cannot go into dhyana meditation straight away you have to go into dharana first dharana means focusing focusing on particular object or focusing on idol of a god dharana from dharana when you are able to concentrate with your thoughts firmly in in place then you go into the next stage called dhyana and from dhyana you can go into the next stage called samadhi which people like Raman Maharshi or Ramakrishna Paramans or Arbindo these are the people who have already achieved that, that state of dhyana which is called samadhi right but the first five which are called bahirang yoga the last three are called antarang yoga inside internal to you and the first five are preparatory practices preparatory practices for going into the antarang yoga what are these? Yama. 
What is yama? This is not the uh, the same yama which takes you to hell or heaven, wherever. He is not the yamadut. Yama here is do's. Uh, sorry, don'ts. Don't do this in life. Never to do these things. So these are the prohibitory injunctions given by God. Yama. Five yamas are there. I will talk about it. Niyamas are the five things which you should positively do. So the first yama is don'ts in life. What are the things you should not do in life? Niyamas are the things which, should you, which you should be positively doing in your life. So yama, niyama. Then comes pratihara. Pratihara means trying to control your senses. Indriya. Which are the five senses we have got? Touching, taste, eyes, ears. And for each one of the sense, we have discovered objects of pleasure. For each one of the sense. For tongue, of course, the whole of Ahmedabad is there. Every second shop is a restaurant. Right? In Ahmedabad. Similarly, for our ears, we have discovered good music. For our eyes, we have discovered beauty in this world. So, a lot of things are there. Right? And we are always seeking objects of pleasure in order to satisfy the desire of our senses to see those things. But if we try to control the senses over a period, then there is a definite advantage to that. So that is called Pratihara. The next one is Asana Pranayam, which you all understand. Asana are physical postures, yogic postures. Pranayam is an exercise of regulating your prana in the body. So you have got all sorts of pranayam, brahmari. Uh, Kapalvati, of course, is coming in the category of Kriya. Kapalvati is not a pranayam. Kapalvati comes under Sat Kriya. Six Kriyas are there. And Kriyas are internal cleanling, cleaning, cleanliness drive. So, for example, this, uh, what you call, Neti, Dhoti, Kapalvati, these are all Kriyas, which clean up your internal organs, which are given in Ayurveda also, and which is given in the science of yoga also. Shat Kriya, Shat Karma. So Shat Karma is Kriya. So Kapalvati is one of them, but the other thing, Anulom, Vilom, or all these are Pranayams, Brahmari, uh, these are all Sitli, Sitkari, all these are uh, this one, which Ramdevji Maharaj is also teaching and many of you must be doing at home. Then Dharna, Dhyan, Samadhi, I already talked about. Let's come to what is Yama and Niyama, right? Yamas are don'ts. What is Yama? These are the things one should not be doing. Ahinsa. So one should not be doing hinsa. Does hinsa mean giving a physical blow to somebody? No. Here hinsa means manasa, kacha, manasa, vacha, kaya. From body, we should not injure anybody. Even through mind, we should not injure anybody. And through vacha, through our speech also, we should not try to uh, sort of displease anybody. Now some people do ask a question. Does that mean that we should always sweet speak to everyone? Certainly not. If you are in the role of a manager, where punishment is to be given to a person, you need to be angry with him. You need to really show your anger also. But that's not hinsa. That is a hinsa also. What is covered by your swadharma, that you need to do, and that will not be hinsa. A judge who is giving a death sentence to a person, asking him to be killed, he is not doing hinsa. He is doing a hinsa. Arjuna being asked by Lord Krishna, go and kill all of them. It's not hinsa, it is a hinsa. What is covered by your swadharma is not hinsa. Satya, not telling lies. Asteya, Asteya is not claiming what does not belong to you. It is really pregnant with meaning. Aste doesn't mean not stealing. Nobody does any stealing. But if you take something which does not belong to you, say for example, you are a government servant, you are taking your salary, but you are not contributing enough against that salary. So actually you are stealing money from government. If you are not able to give proportionate amount of services to the organization you serve, it is stealing. Asteya. Asteya has got such a broader meaning. right? Then Brahmacharya, not indulging into unnecessary sexual activity. That is how we interpret Brahmacharya as in the modern world. And Aparigraha, Aparigraha is actually 
the art of not collecting too many things in your life not possessing anything which is not required by you right now this is very important aparigraha aparigraha is a very practical virtue we should which you should have in your life lot of modern people when they give advice on happiness they say the first thing you should do in order to make your life happy and orderly is to remove all unnecessary things from your office from your home because how many things have we collected in our life and for what purpose you can notice if you really think about it ki there are many things which you have not even touched for last 6 months but still they are lying in the cupboards there are many things which you have not even looked at for the last 10 years but still they are cluttering up your house simple principle of parigraha but it can really lighten up your life if you follow the principle of aparigraha don't possess anything more than what you require that simplifies your life so much and what happens is that we collect so many things in office and at home we are not able to find time to read those things in office and enjoy other things at home and all the time we are busy managing space for this articles removing from one place keeping in the other space again removing from other place putting it somewhere else so these are the things which complicate our life our mind will never be at peace if we do not have the virtue of aparigraha it really unsettles us our mind is all the time busy in maintaining those things right so aparigraha has got a very uh, good uh, this thing practical advantage also so these are the rules during interaction with society and if you are interaction with the society is straight forward then you have nothing to worry then your life is much more simpler one uh, famous you know just to uh, give an example of satya and brahmacharya right once in a company the company top management thought that let us give some kind of an incentive to the middle level executives of the company it was a big multinational company so they sort of offered to all the middle level executives that we want to give you the two tickets for going to mauritius for you and your wife and for enjoying the stay there for one week or not one week two days you just enjoy your stay for two days in mauritius at our cost all the expenses are taken care of by us as a kind of a motivation to the company executive so everybody accepted the offer people went there all good so far after six months suddenly the company top management thought that how much of motivation has actually resulted out of this both in the executive as well as in his personal life because his wife must have also been pleased with this kind of a perquisite so they sent a letter to all the wives directly saying that of course we have got a feedback from your husband that they really enjoyed this vacation when you and your husband went to mauritius but we would like to know your opinion about it how did you find this vacation and lo and behold there were problems because many of the wives didn't go along with their husbands so they all came searching who is it that went with my husband please tell us so what was initially thought of as a motivation became a big killer there were lot of squabbles at home because of this so when you don't follow satya and brahmacharya this is what happens right your life is complicated you can imagine the mind of this fellow how much unsettled he must be feeling during this period when this was discovered life becomes complicated if you don't follow these simple principles one fellow is very nicely said that if you always tell the truth you don't have to remember too many things only when you tell lies you have to remember so many things and you have to tell different things to different people and all those things are there so this is what is the yama niyama are the principles of self practice rules for self practice the things which you should be doing in your life socha cleanliness personal hygiene cleanliness both physical and mental keep your mind very very transparent from mind you should not have any any kind of ill thought towards anybody 
so always have your mind clear also so socha is both physical and mental the personal cleanliness hygiene santosh contentment nobody needs to explain to you the importance of contentment because there is no end of desire in life one famous example is of alexander the great when he came to visit various countries to conquer over them he was passing through india and he found a beautiful spot by the side of a river there was a big tree nice shadow so he was riding on his horse he thought this is a nice place let me spend some time here one of the reason why he thought he would spend some time here was there was a saint one kind of a monk who was resting under the tree and he looked to him very bright fellow you know kya kitna chamak raha hai ye so let me find out let me start interacting with him so he got down from his horse he sort of sat next to this fellow and started interacting so this monk asked him ke who are you and where are you going he says i am uh, alexander the great uh, from so and so mesopotamia or whatever and i am going to conquer the country which is next door oh great after that what will you do he says after that i will conquer the next country which is coming after that you must have named bangladesh or Brahm, whatever you know those names old names myanmar or whatever after that he says then i'll conquer this country that country he says after that he says then i will conquer the whole world he says after that after that i will take rest complete rest so that fellow said that's what i'm doing now <laughs> that's what i'm doing now why don't you come and sleep by my side you and take rest why do you need to conquer the whole world in order to get some rest in li- get some rest in life you don't need to do all this necessarily it is so said in our scriptures that even the wealth of entire universe is not enough to satisfy the greed of one person there is enough for everybody's need in this universe but just not enough for the greed of even one person so santosh contentment in life is very important if you have contentment in life there will be a balance in your life you will be dividing your time between your career family social spiritual aspect but otherwise your life will be lopsided because you got a wrong notion of life right so that's what is santosh then tapas the tapas is austerity in life right simplicity austerity tapas has got a value because if you try to maintain austerity in life and do tapas then you are able to control your mind so tapas has got that benefit of uh, con- uh, of controlling your mind indirectly then swadhyay swadhyay is daily practice the importance here is of regularity so swadhyay means daily practice whatever you do in terms of asana pranayama meditation listening to good lectures doing satsang or whatever you want to do listening to a good music or reading a good book all these are important if you do it every day swadhyay has got an importance every day you should do it some people do it for 5 days and then forget about it <laughs> not like that swadhyay is every day then comes ishvar pranidan the feeling of total surrender to god it has got a great value i can tell you great value <laughs> just imagine in an organization where you are working if your boss is so kind so good that you feel so good working for him because you know that any problem that comes to my life my boss is there to save me what a feeling of elation you have with you when you have such a boss any problem you know by experience that any time you had a problem you ran to that boss and that boss somehow managed to get things set right for you such a trust we have in human beings can we not repose same kind of faith in god and if we do that the amount of security that we feel in our life is tremendous <coughs> complete trust in the justice system of god understanding that whatever he does is for my good not for harming me 
the concept of god can never be like this that there is somebody up above there who is watching your actions and the moment you go wrong he wants to punish you certainly not whatever is done by god is with a design even if there are problems which are given to you they come to you for a purpose because the god wants to make you better in life people who have faced problems have only progressed in life take the example of kachis and marwadis adverse climate in the region so they all became smart people entrepreneurs they all migrated to other places and they have done well for themselves why because of adversity so similarly any adverse situation which comes to your life can easily be overcome if you think it is a prasad of god some people say sukh is a prasad dukh is a mahaprasad sukh is a prasad but dukh is a mahaprasad and that mahaprasad can only be experienced if you have got that trust in your god whatever god you believe in any god that you believe in even if you don't believe in god you say that there is some consciousness in this world some chaitanya tatva which is actually governing this entire life and who is also governing my actions my motivations my mind my intelligence everything is governed by that particular person and you should trust that person that he will never do injustice to you if something is given to you it could be your karma phala of the past birth or it could be given to you with a view to make you a better person if this kind of a trust is there that is called ishwar pranidana under the yama niyama ishwar pranidan feeling of complete trust and surrender to god he is there he will never let me down that kind of a feeling has to be there ishwar pranidan how does yama niyama and pratyahara help us in self management how do how do they help because you may think that i am talking about all high ideals certainly not these are the things which are practical advices to control your mind to have better control over your emotions because if you do yama niyama and uh, pratyahara these three things which are also soft aspects of yoga and not many people follow the, that in their life then mind is not unnecessary cluttered with unnecessary thoughts your mind is transparent clear and your mind is much more free to do creative things in life it it feels happy also and prati uh, this uh, what is it uh, aparigraha it will have uh, leave you with a less cluttered home and office which will give you a lot of peace of mind if you have a very simple home very simple drawing room simple bedroom you will really enjoy it as if you have come to goa and you are staying in a five star hotel why why do we like to stay in a hotel hotels look good because there are no big wardrobes and there are not too many articles scattered here and there that's why we like hotels but the same hotel atmosphere why don't we create at home through aparigra you can try and then pure emotions of the manager breed respect and love among others thereby boosting up one self esteem imagine the benefit that comes to you in terms of boosting up your self esteem because as an individual people will respect you here is a man who is following the dictates of yoga and you cannot distrust him that kind of a trust feeling of trust people will put in you so may they be your subordinates or may they be your family members or maybe they are your relations or friends imagine the kind of respect you will get in the society by that kind of a behavior so these are all practical advices meant to boost up your self esteem and meant to give you peace of mind meant to control your mind remember yoga ha chitta vritti nirodha right karma yoga attitude to life this is the last thing i want to cover because i'm running out of time those 20 principles of bhagavad gita i'm not going to cover today because i realize we are already at 7:30 but the last thing is karma yoga attitude to life is believe in the fruits of karma and accept every situation as god's prasad focus on work rather than result this is the short message of karma yoga focus on work rather than result what does this mean does this mean that we are losing our goal orientation in life not the goals have to be there for individuals the goals have to be there for organizations but the difference here is that having 
set the goal you are not unnecessarily obsessed about the results example sachin tendulkar when he goes to play suppose he has always in his mind oh no 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 today i must make 100 runs he goes with that thought and that thought is haunting him no no i have done not enough uh, in the last 3 4 matches in this match i must make 100 runs you can imagine that his game will be spoiled so when you are unnecessarily obsessed about results in life then your focus on action is reduced and your action is spoiled and then you don't achieve those results but when you trust god's justice system and say that let me do my work properly whether i get promotion or not god will decide i leave it to god to decide whether i get promotion or not definitely the results will come good results will definitely come for a person who does good in life there is always good result so focus on action rather than on the result is the karma yoga attitude to life and this is very important don't do anything with a complete obsession about the selfish objectives the objectives may be selfish for example your objective is to do well in your business you are an entrepreneur you want to do good profit but don't unnecessarily try to focus on 50 crore profit only or 51 crore profit you simply say that i will do my best whatever is required whatever i have to do for my business i will do but whether i get 50 crore of profit or 5 crore of profit let let that be decided by my own fate this kind of attitude will help you free from obsession about the result because if you are obsessed and if the result done doesn't come then there is a big amount of disappointment you can understand that disappointment so why be disappointed you are prepared to accept any result because your focus is not on the result your focus is on what you do today what kind of a work you do today and there you are very organized you are focused and you given your best you put in your 24 hours and that's it after that forget about the result results will come automatically leave it to god that's the karma yoga attitude of life which we must all be following the 20 human values 13 of them are covered by bhagavad gita only seven of them are already covered in yama niyama so actually you have to only remember 17 of them this 13th chapter uh, i will just read out the list without actually explaining what it is adambitvam absence of unnecessary showing off don't show off if you don't have money tell people that okay you are doing ordinarily you are not such a big man but people want to show off that they are a rich person even if they are not amanitvam expecting people to respect them why was i not received at the gate here when i came why why did that person not wish me good morning you cannot expect respect respect is to be commanded not to be demanded so amanitvam is a good quality which lord krishna has said you should accept in your life and ahankara very obvious absence of self egotism arjavam straight forwardness anasakti non attachment to things there is a difference between love and attachment if you love your child you do all that is necessary for his growth but if you are attached to your child you will always try to keep him close to you and you will never be able to take a decision which is for his growth because you are attached unnecessarily you don't love him you love him but to the extent of attachment that is the difference if the child falls sick the mother will fall sick why because extreme amount of attachment is there so attachment is not good in life attachment to anything in life that is not good so that is what is the message here spending time sorry uh, yeah uh, the other thing uh, related to that which is specifically mentioned by lord krishna is not keeping excessive attachment towards son and wife that is also specifically given spending time alone is what is prescribed no inclination for people and company we always seek somebody's company we cannot remain at rest with ourselves moment we go home we switch on the television we want somebody's company so television is on keep on surfing the channel or you ring up manu bhai chagan bhai whoever ke bhai aa jao na aaj kya kar rahe ho let us meet so seeking somebody's company is what we always want you should try to dissort from this kind of a behavior try to spend time with yourself alone at home try to do something try to not do anything 
try to just be and observe yourself acharya upa uh, acharya upasana service to the teacher the guru is prescribed sthiryam steadfastness not having fickle minded behavior keeping in view the purpose of knowledge of truth stability in the knowledge of truth and repeated review of the process of life death old age ailments and pain deh dukhanu darshanam that is the word used for this the pains of the body the pains of suffering the pains of death we do get some smasan vairagya when we see somebody dying and we go to visit them but after that we forget but always lord krishna says always keep it in mind that yes we have finite body ultimately after some time it will uh, happen to us also so we better spend our time more gainfully and these are the seven views values which are already covered by ashtang yoga so the message is let us follow the path of yoga in the integrated way not simply asana and pranayama the benefits are immense for total personality development and regularity is the key the swadhyay part of it thank you very much questions yeah yeah okay fine yeah. yes please feel free to ask questions if anybody is feeling uh, anybody is uh, actually getting late for getting back home please get up and go if you don't want to stay for the question answer session if you are getting late please feel free to go i will have no objection to that okay so please yes please yeah sure yeah okay uh, how you it's it's quite a qualitative difference i really can't narrate that it's such a quality <coughs> difference you know the life is completely different now it's very good excellent i mean you can't really describe it but it's something it's a big personal gain i would say okay both me and for my family also okay yeah chitta is basically you can call it your subconscious mind a place where you hide all your information so it's a kind of a you know two interpretations of chitta are there some people say chitta is a subconscious mind the layer beneath your mind and some people say it is the place where all the old information is stored right so that's the place which bothers us most the subconscious mind can be used positively or the negatively say for example chitta the storage facility part of it hard disk part of it the chitta retains unnecessary information about the past say 20 years ago that fellow insulted me and that information is not refusing to leave your mind chitta it has come out of chitta right so that's chitta yes sir yeah gujarati ma ha museum museum for us but that might be you put to somebody else later on give it to them immediately later on why why later on don't procrastinate punya karya do it today if you think your library books are important to other people donate them right away if you think your old dining table which has been languishing something out of that hobby so whether it is good or bad no it if it is a hobby of collecting some ancient furniture or uh, what is it called uh, yeah antiques then it's a different thing if it is a hobby and you have got a place for uh, having that kind of a hobby but don't mix it up with your daily life you keep your antique furniture separately in a museum your house should be simple you have a piece of mind with that you can't you as a hobby if you like pursuing it sometimes yes you get a peace of mind when you visit that uh, museum but your daily life will be complicated if you try to collect too many things in your drawing room just to show off to people that you have got all the old pieces of saurashtra states uh, uh, one by one one and talking of that proverb proverbs are always both way gujarati ma em pan kevay ke na bola ma nav gun ane bole ena bor vechay okay here yeah, please there is better thing to follow but uh, like tata and billa collecting money and then giving back to the society is 
Well, money is not bad per se. Money is good. But the money should give you freedom. Because happiness is freedom. Happiness is freedom. If you have got so much of money and desire to collect more, which does not permit you to leave your business even for a day, then that money is binding. That is not giving you happiness. So money per se is not bad. But money should give you freedom in life. Okay? Yes, please. Not really. Aparagraha is one of them. Aparigraha is the simplest of all to understand and it has got a direct practical utility. Today, all of you can decide. The moment we go home, we will clear all those things from our house which we have not, not touched for the last six months. But the ladies will never be able to give up saris. <laughs> Even the sari of uh, Kanyadan, they would be sorry. Emotional attachment, we can't do anything about it. Yeah. It's not as simple. The modern psychology. Okay, the correct. Case. Yeah, they do claim the modern psychology has got their own therapies. But ultimately, let me tell you that the correct therapy is really this removing the desires, unnecessary desires from your mind and making your life very, very simple. Ultimately, this is the final long-term solution. The psychologist or the psychiatrist may give you some benefit in terms of suggesting certain small things, you know. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that, of course, is a very oft-quoted statement. There is no explanation required for that. Yoga ha karma shu kaushalam. The dexterity in what you do is yoga. But there is one more definition. Samatvam yoga uchyate. Yoga is equanimity of mind. So equanimity ka meaning kya hai? So Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita only has given both these definitions. Samatvam yoga uchyate and yoga ha karma shu kaushalam. What is the definition of equanimity? Having the same perception for difficulty and success. That's equanimity of mind. Treating him and him in the same manner as the expression of divine. This is equanimity. Not differentiating between lower class people and higher class people. Treating each one with the same respect. Treating your peon also with the same respect and treating your boss also with the same respect. That is equanimity of mind. An ultimate stage of yoga is when you are able to develop such equanimity of mind with everybody and with every situation. Sukha, Dukha, Maan, Apman. With all these Dvandvas of life, you are having the same attitude. That is called Samatvam, equanimity. Yes, please. Yeah. Sir, you told about Satsang and uh, you told also about the remaining alone. So, how to Satsang, <laughs> Satsang, if you do with the right people, Satsang itself will guide you to remain alone with yourself. Because having heard some Swamiji or some wise person, you will feel like analyzing yourself. You will say, okay, today this was discussed, let me analyze myself. You will feel like meditating more often when you do satsang. Okay? And that will help you. One minute, I'll just uh, come to you. Uh, dexterity in action is yoga. Karma shu kaushalam. Dexterity, efficiency in your action is yoga. And please remember, it is a simple thing. Some people say that I am very efficient in my work, but I don't do any one of this, satya, hinsa, etc. So does that mean he is a yogi? No. The real efficiency comes only if there is no attachment to the result. That kind of efficiency, level of concentration will only come, that kind of risk taking capability will only come if a person has very less attachment to results. Then only it will come. Yes, please. Equipoise. Equipoise means balance of mind. You're, you are able to keep a balance in your mind. Right? Same thing as equanimity, you can say.
Yes, please. Yeah. Is the government only attacking the government? Do you think that politicians and the business people, corporate business people, should be given a reason like this, uh, yoga way of life, to improve the nation and the progress of the nation? I am nobody to prescribe anything for anybody. Okay. <laughs> It is AMA which thought, ke, okay, let me sort of talk here. I have become an instrument in somebody's hand to come here and give a lecture. But I am really not in that position to, I am not the Prime Minister of this country to actually dictate uh, this. Okay, So that is for other people. Yeah, it should be like this. What is your feeling? What is your feeling? I feel that it should be given to them. Then your feeling is as good as mine because you are my brother. <laughs> yes, please. It is not contradicting. In fact, people are turning around. Having discovered the futility and disillusionment of money and the money power and the position power, people are now turning turning around. Even in USA, why I told you that figure, one, 11 million people practicing yoga in USA because they all want peace of mind. People really want to, sorry? Zen meditation? I have no views on that. Somebody much greater than me must have discovered that. So I, I really can't comment on that. But anything is good. Anything that brings your mind under control is good. Whether you follow Zen meditation or Buddhist meditation or you follow um, uh, the Sahaj Yoga path or you follow the Art of Living path, whatever path you follow, it's good for you. Anything that improves the quality of your life is good for you. Okay? Good? So if there are no more... Yeah. This is the last question. Yeah. What made you go into do research in the subject? What was the motivation? Some indication which came from above. So. Sorry? Yeah. Yeah? For all it is, go to the last question. Why it has become stylish? Stylish to do what? Call it yoga, then yoga. I knew this question would come because in Sanskrit, any word that is not ending with a that is half you know you put that half yes. chitta ta, tame you put ra, uh, but if you want to say chitta means ke full a then the only way to write it in english is put an a, a there if i say yog it will be pronounced as yog 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 but i want to say yoga so that is why a is added and when a is you added it is very convenient to pronounce it as yoga. Like so, but I have no... Name, Asmukha, you have not written A at the end. Yeah, that's true. Uh -huh. But the code for Sanskrit to English transliteration, which has been adopted for all the Upanishads, Bhagavad Gita, there is a code which is existing. All the major Upanishads are already translated in English. Bhagavad Gita is also translated in English. So, all the Sanskrit literature, where, while translating it in, into English, transliterating it, not translating, transliterating. So writing yoga in the English way, this is the chord which they follow. I mean you write it, like suppose if you are a Gujarati. Yeah. How would you say, you know, speak it, like it's a, you would call it a yoga or you would call it yoga? Suppose you have to give this lecture in Gujarati. Well, I am sorry if I have ever offended your sense of language, but it is only convenience which I look at. Whether we call it yoga or yoga, I have no intention of offending anybody's language thing. But I agree with you, the correct pronunciation in Gujarati should be yoga. But the way it is pronounced elsewhere in English is yoga. And this lecture was in English, so I found it more convenient to say yoga. Okay, okay with this, thank you very much.